well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Welcome, one and all. We are definitely using our platform, and we are streaming. I don't know about you guys, but have you checked out our latest podcast? We are streaming all over the place, just so that you all know that. Our thoughts today are inspired by this thought. I am no longer who I was. I am not yet who I am becoming. And our, our topic is your becoming. When you think about your becoming, we're going to talk about what are you becoming. Good morning, Trish. How are you? Good morning. I'm okay. Good morning. And I thank you as my co-host. I'm always excited about starting a new week because we never know what we're going to get when we are in our podcast live. We're live here on Facebook. And today, as you know, if you've been with us on Tuesday, it's Transformation Tuesday, all about change and finding out how do we change? How do we change into becoming something that we once were into something that we want to become? Better versions of ourselves. We're going to be talking about that. If you'd like to call into the show or text, our direct connect is 661-503-8993. And don't forget, you can message us anywhere at any time on our podcast. So, you are who you are. You were born to be you. But now, have you ever given thought to becoming what a caterpillar becomes within the butterfly? Signifying growth and our need to grow or to change. You know, a lot of people in life have changed. And if you've ever been around people long enough, you start to recognize their changes. And that's because life presents it that way. When we think about becoming who we are, better versions of ourselves, maybe becoming stronger. And we become stronger because we've suffered things and we've overcame things. Sometimes when we look at people, we think to ourselves, my they've changed. Sometimes that can be very challenging because it's not always for the good. Not all changes are good. Here we're talking in the positive sense. So what can you and I do to strengthen, become 
better versions of who we already are. Making ourselves rise. Stand up. Vibe Talk is all about discovering the strengths in you. Discovering if you have had trauma or suffering or tragedy that you can rebuild yourself and you will rise again. Good morning and welcome. Nobody can tell you best about yourself. No other human that is. But you. The power is in your hands don't give it to anyone else to make or break you and it is a ongoing ever changing thought when you are becoming something other than what you were, it is a part of you that is going to be lost. It's kind of like when we see fashion. Good morning, Maddie, and welcome to Vibe Talk, Facing the Lion podcast. It's ongoing. You must find yourself you must find yourself during this becoming you. How many of you right now can safely say that you know who and what you want to become? How many of you, you can say that safely? I know what I want to become. And for those of us that are maybe suffering or maybe going through some changes right now, acknowledging your need to change. Thank you so much, Maddie, for that. How many of you are acknowledging or acknowledging that there's something I need to change in order to become who I want to be? And we were born to be who we are, characteristically, but I want you to know that by characteristics, by personality, by how we behave, act, and think, there's always room for change. Do you all agree with that? And your, your comments, keep them coming, even if you want to ask. Ask questions. What do you think, Trish, without going into your Trish's treasures? And Maddie, and those of you who are listening. Are you asking me what do I think about becoming who I want to become? Yes. Or, oh, okay. I think it has a lot to do with my mindset. Because me personally, if I don't think I can achieve or become who I want to become, it's an automatic no for me. And I just automatically think I can't do it because in my head, it doesn't make sense. So to become something or the best version of myself, I'd have to be more positive in my mindset. That's what I think. Yeah, thank you for that share. Beautifully said. So when we think about ourselves, time does not stand still. You see, yourself and myself does not wait to be discovered. But in Vibe Talk, Facing the Lion podcast, you start to discover yourself 
selfhood. I want you to write that down. Selfhood. You know, there's in the hood, little red riding hood, boys in the hood. Now I want you to think selfhood. Write that down wherever you're keeping a journal, if you are or in your device. What does the selfhood look like to you? Here, when we talk about self, we don't mean it in a sense of self. All we think about is self. I'll give you a re revelation about me. I was called selfish. And... I'm so far from being selfish. I'm in a line of work that requires me not to think about living in the neighborhood of selfhood. But the self that I want to discover is exactly what I want to do, make changes. And I discovered something about myself that I have been far from selfish. And that if I am selfish, maybe that is not the best person to be around. Especially after years of knowing someone. So I discovered something in my selfhood of the neighborhood. If someone thinks something and tries to paint a picture of you, you take your power back. Does everyone get that? Do you get that, Trish? Yes. Maddie, what about you? See, don't let people label you. And if they see you as a selfish person, Maybe they're not the people that you should hang out with. Normal times that would have bothered me, but I realized I discovered something about me. That I will waste no more time and people trying to stigmatize me. Because you see, what I've discovered about selfhood within me is no, nobody can tell me who or what I am. I'm sure of who I am. And that doesn't mean that I don't admit my mistakes. That you don't get the privilege to tell me who or what I am. And I want you guys to start thinking like that when it comes to your neck of the wood, when you think about yourself. But now, since we're talking about selfhood, you all like to take selfies, right? When was the last time you took a selfie? Anybody? Two days ago? Yeah. Mine was probably uh, just last week. Now, why, why did you take that selfie? We're going to get into something very deep here. Why did you take the selfie? Uh, uh, because I thought my hair, it looked great. Love it. See, that's part of your selfhood. You said, my hair looked great. I want you to write that down. And you're going to discover something about yourself at the end of this program. I took a selfie because I like me. Years 
ago, I might not have been able to do that because I didn't like me. So I took that selfie because, hey, I like me. Going back to being called selfish, there are people that are in and out of our lives, and when they notice that you are becoming stronger, there's always somebody that's going to try to change them. But don't you let them. See, everybody likes to take selfies, but why? Why are we taking selfies? Selfie doesn't mean that we're selfish. It means that you think something about yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And here's a little assignment for you. If you don't like yourself, start taking pictures of you. Because you know what you're doing? You don't have to post them if you don't want to. But you're learning to accept self -hood. Everybody get that word? Who here does not get that word? self -hood. And was that, that the first, is it the first time that you've heard the word selfhood? Yes. yes, that's my first time. Yeah. And I like this word when I discovered it. Because why? We all live in neighborhoods, whether it's your parents that have picked the neighborhoods. You get to pick the kind of self that you want to live. You've heard of neck of the wood and neighborhoods. You get to be the one who picks that. I want you to think about your selfhood. You know, I always say in here, we're all a work of progress, in progress. I'm a piece of work. But really, we are. Because we are people who are constantly striving to do better. And you can put a question mark, an exclamation point, or a hmm, because I can restate that if you come a little closer. Are you constantly striving to do your best? You. Yes, you. When we we become progressively who we want to be, even then, we are in a constant state of recreating our mindset, ourselves, just like clothes, you know, out with the old in with the new. If you're like me and you like clothing, I love clothes. Thank you so much, Maddie. I love clothes. And I, I might take a couple of pieces and say, you know what? I've had this dress forever or those pants forever. It's time for new. And so we go and we get new pieces. See, our, ourselves, we wear our personalities like clothing. Is there ever a time where you've sat down and you've said, it's time for a change within myself? There are some people that I've worked with that feel like they don't need to change because there's nothing wrong. They're perfect. Little do they know. In the first, very first meeting, that they have discovered something about themselves. And I'll tell you this every time you have come to this podcast, you learn 
something new about yourself. And that's why at the end of the program, you find that even Trish and I, we do it as work to let you see that we are really doing work. We ask you, what did you discover in today's podcast? We need to continue to think about how do we recreate? How do we change? Because I guarantee you that none of us are perfect. There's so many changes. And by the way, remember how I told you, or not told, because this is not a force podcast, it's if you want to. When you take those selfies, you know what you're going to discover? You're going to come face to face with who you are. You ever played a game with little kids? I've done this because I work with little kids and I love little kids. When they're about five, show them a baby picture of themselves. They have no idea who that baby is until someone says, that's you. You ever saw the expression on their face? Because they don't have any recollection of them being a baby. Isn't that amazing how we have no recollection of that? But now, if you show them a picture as they are now, they recognize themselves. Can that be said of you? Do you look exactly the same that you did two years ago? Is your behavior the same as it was a year ago? You've changed. And you start to recognize your changes. And that, that's when you find Discovery about yourself. Many of us can't stand to look at ourselves. We can't stand to hear our own voices. Even in Vibe Talk, I've learned to like my voice. Because I want to tell you something that we do, Trisha and I, in our podcast. We have to go back and listen to ourselves for legal purposes. And when you listen to yourself, how does that make you feel? Anybody? How does it I'm, make you feel? I'm actually getting used to it, but before I would cringe. I'd be like, oh my goodness, I sound like that. And then I critique myself. I'm my worst critic, critic yeah. when I hear myself. Yeah. That's what we do. We start to pick ourselves apart. Not understanding the best of ourselves. Because I do that too. But today we're going to be able to find our own path to be able to discover the good about ourselves. There are some things we may not like, but we can always discover the good about ourselves. This is a very interesting topic. We're going to be right back. I promise we'll be right back. We're back. Sorry about that. We are experiencing 
slightly technical difficulty. How do you make the best of who you are? Why is that even something important to be thinking about? Or do you think about it? Some of us cannot be who we were meant to be. Come a little closer. Some of us cannot be who we were meant to be. Why is that? Why is it that you cannot be who you really want to be? There was a very famous singer who when asked why did she feel like she was her worst enemy? Her reply was because I never wanted to be the person that the music made me. I was not, not that person. In fact, they said, I felt made up. I felt pretending, like I was pretending, because when the lights went off, I was not that person. I, I never wanted to be that person. Brace yourself as I reveal to you who this famous singer was. Are you ready? None other than Whitney Houston. I will never forget her words. Imagine that. The voice saying that. In fact, she coined Sometimes I am my worst enemy. How many of you feel like that? I have felt exactly like that. I have. Yeah. yeah. See, we may look okay to others on the outside, but in the inside, we are having internal struggles, whatever they may be. How many of you would say, wow, I didn't know Whitney Houston was fighting that battle? See, we all decided, or some of us decided to judge her without really sitting down to hear that interview. And it saddened me, and I never forgot it. Because we think, wow, we want to become just like they are. But they are battling. When you are not the true you that you want to be, it's got to be exhausting. Trish, did you want to share your experience with that feeling? Sure, I can. That experience with that particular feeling I get emotional about it because it's like I know in me, I feel it right now in my chest that I can be like far more than I limit myself to be. And sometimes, if not sometimes, most of the time I hold myself back because of fear of what could happen or if it won't happen. And that's regarding my music 
And I think, and I'm also afraid to pursue that career because I don't know what the outcome will be. And because of that, I feel like, like I'm holding myself back. And it hurts sometimes. I admit that it hurts a lot because it's like I'm not giving myself credit, if that makes sense. That makes a lot, lot of sense. And I hope it will to those of you who are listening around the world. You know, when we think about ourselves, we experience life in various ways. Some people who are just being themselves or not knowing how to be themselves, they choose to cater to others so that others will like them more. While others may seek to impress, impress others while pretending to be something that they truly are not. We call them phonies. Have you ever thought about it? That those, those are the people that just cannot be themselves. Think about that, if you will. If you could be the you that you are, what would you be, and who would you be? I'll tell you what, I'd be a person that surrounds myself with every person without having the barrier of not trusting people. You see, the me that I am in my selfhood, I have a problem with trusting. And there aren't going to be very many people that I'm going to choose as my, my very close associates. They will be just simply acquaintances because of my experience. Who would you be, Trish? I would be someone who is more outspoken of how I feel, regardless of if if I have a close relationship with someone, I would just straight up tell them how I actually feel about them or how they made me feel. That would be a breath of fresh air for me. And I would be someone that's not afraid to ask for help or talk about myself in front of people and let people know that, yes, I do do music or, yes, I am talented because there are some people that really did not know that about me. And I hide that a lot. But if I was a person that would do that, would expose myself in that positive light, I would be so happy and grateful. I resonate with that because even people who know me in a public setting that are in and around me, I don't tell very many people that I host a podcast and a now new radio show. And that's because I feel like I just can't say it. I have no problem doing ads, do I, Trish? Because you have no problem doing ads. The people who are in my world don't really know. I, I want to be the best version of myself. You see, because of me feeling self-critical, 
I take on and I sabotage. Really? You're a life coach? Really? You are a radio co-host or host? I'm beating myself up before others get that chance. Shocking, you say? We're all pieces of work. So we have to become what we were meant to be. I have to start thinking that if this was put in my lap, and this was my calling. I must accept it as part of my selfhood. See, you wrote the word selfhood. What does that look like to you? When we think about the who that we are, we think about our, our abilities. You know, we're, we're so in tune to our dislikes that we could probably write an, a biography. We could probably write a book on all, all the things we dislike about ourselves because we are really our worst critic. But now, what if you started writing about your more positive personality? traits. What would that feel like for you? Trisha, I heard you talk about your music, and yes, you are very creative in what you do, and we've talked about letting other people know what you do. You had an assignment. How did you do with that assignment of clicking like in, in your selfhood? about your, your music. You remember that assignment? Yes, I remember. How did, how did you feel the first time you did that assignment? Because I saw it. To be honest, I felt like I was doing something wrong. I felt mm -hmm. like I was being selfish, to be real. I don't know why I'm getting emotional, <laughs> but I felt like I did something like bad to just hype myself up, be my own hype man, yeah. to be real. Yeah. And it will feel different. And the reason it feels different is because we don't accept ourselves with the talents and abilities. Doesn't mean that we are prideful. It means that you have taken pride in your work. You have the right to feel good about what you do. And if nobody likes it, be the first to like it. Because you know that thing that we said about waiting to be discovered, you'll just wait. Nobody is going to be the first, even if it is good. There are some people in our world that won't say it's good. So you have to say, I really like that. And what you're doing is building for yourself pieces of yourself that accept your becoming. Our belief systems, how we feel morally, the things that motivate us should all, all be under our selfhood. We talk about ourselves. Because if you don't talk about yourself, Someone else will in the worst way. Going back to being called selfish. When you really think 
think that you know of someone and they call you that because they did wrong and they didn't admit that they could have, that's all that was, honestly. Because nobody ever thought I was selfish. Nobody who really knows me, and I could accept it if it were the truth. We have to contribute to our becoming. You have to embrace your self-image. The uniqueness of who you are standing in yourself at this present moment. How many of us really have a strong sense of who we are? Think about that. We'll be right back because we are definitely going to get into the meat of this. We'll be right back. Live Talk After Dark Radio Show is Saturdays. Join us for smooth, slow music and conversation. Tune in to us right here live on Saturdays. And by the way, go check us out on our YouTube page. It's Live Talk After Dark Radio Show. We are back, and we're talking about you becoming. So far, we've taken a look at who we are. We want to express to you all that we understand how this can be a challenge. But that's why I like vibe talk, if I might say so myself, because it challenges me. Does it challenge you, Trish, and how so? Yes, it does challenge me, and it challenges me to be my true self and come out of the shell of shying away from who I am and I love that challenge because it's training me and my mindset on taking risks that will help me in the long run in my life. Mm -hmm. Here's something to think about being yourself. Thank you for that, Trish. For me, being myself is freedom. Freedom from others judging me and I'm sick because they have judged me and my response to it is I hate myself even more. Not that, that is the old me. That is what I was. I am no longer that person. I am free. I am happy just because I know that I am a piece of work that is a master piece in the working. I know that I am myself and I understand selfhood without being selfish. So we have to take that, ladies and gentlemen. Our hands are a powerful tool. Do we know how to use them? We take this and we put empowerment in one and love in the other to be able to accept selfhood. Did everyone get that? I sure hope so. It is very important. When you are yourself, what are the benefits of you being yourself? 
How have you benefited from you just being yourself? I'll give you an experience. People love that I am just myself. People know that I am nobody truer than myself. And sometimes I really have to adjust to just being me. Whereas I would tell people off in a minute, I now think about my words because I get to choose. There's no one in me, no one on the outside, on the external of me that chooses or gets to choose my response. I love that about myself, that I am in control of just being me. A lot of people say, I don't know who I am anymore. And I've found that working with different individuals, they've lost themselves because trauma, pain, depression, abuse. And it takes not just one or two conversations, it, it takes many conversations so that they can discover who and what they really are. So they can take off one layer at a time. I always like to relate things into childhood because when we think about childhood, childhood has established good after or good morning. I see you there. And how are you for those of you who are coming into our live audiences? Where are you listening in from as we discuss our becoming? Thank you for joining Five Talk Facing the Lion podcast. And we're so glad you're here. And where are you listening from? Please and thank you as you write there. We are live on Facebook and live on other social media platforms right now. So what have you discovered about yourselves? Have you discovered your potential? Thank you for those hearts. Have have you discovered your full potential that leads you to your passions? You build dreams. You have exercised your right to be the you that you are, despite what you're going through. Because when you can choose after you discover, hey, I have the power to be able to do that. When you choose it, you're going to find that many doors of opportunities are going to open up to you. Because when we're, what I was going to say, when we're children, because I like to relate to childhood a lot, our parents, influence us or our environment influences us but now once you've grown up you get to be the driver of your own journey how is that i hope we are learning a lot today if you still don't know who you are I want you to be able to reflect. I want you to be able to look at yourselves through a picture. Or look at yourself 
in front of a mirror. And I want you good morning and welcome into Vibe Talk Facing the Lion podcast. We are live with you all. And can you all, as you come in, tell us what state you're from, please, and thank you. Trish, you are from? South Carolina. And I am from West Coast, California, high desert. And for those of you coming in, I can see where are you from, please, and thank you. No addresses, just what state are you from? How many of us have an identification card? New York. Hello, New York. Thank you for being in here. How many of us have a driver's license of some sort or an ID of some sort? Anybody? I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you look at that, good morning, Drew. Thank you for coming in. Where are you listening in from? When's the last time you looked at your ID? Maybe people have school IDs, college IDs. When's the last time you really looked at it? Like a month ago. Okay. And I probably looked at mine maybe days ago. Do you think? when you look at your ID, your personal ID, that there are things that you like about your picture? Name one thing you like about your picture. I liked the blonde that was in my hair. Anybody want to give a try? Because this is going to be work. I'll try. I love it. I like the jacket I was wearing with my sweatsuit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. See, we can take those pictures out and we can look at them as self-reflection and saying positive things. Because the first thing we say, and how many of you have said this? Oh, I don't like that picture. Look at that picture. They took a terrible picture of me. I say that. What about you guys? I have. I'm over here laughing. Yeah, because we say things like that. Let's try to build healthy self hoods. Healthy ways of speaking into ourselves being mindful of who we are because we're building a positive relationship with the person that we are becoming. Because when you learn not to speak into yourself negative thinking, you have changed. You now speak positive. You don't even give anybody a chance to, to even say anything about your photo ID or your driver's license because you are the first to beat yourself up because I do it. I want you to start learning who you are. Your life story is not my story. So under your selfhood, I want you to put your life story, what that experience was like for you. I don't want to report. I just want you to put something that identifies you. When I say life story, what was that like? Mammy, thank you. I see you. Thank you so much. For those of you who are new, I'd like to ask a dear favor of you. We have a YouTube page. Go check it out. Trish and I are working so hard. Trish is the moderator of that page. I want you to go check it out. You won't be disappointed. And please follow it as well as our Facebook page. You see our green logo right there. Can't miss it. That way you 
you will not miss one thing. Your life story, going back to that, I want you to think about what you learned from your story called life. As early as your childhood, what are some of your strengths? What do you do well? Reflecting on yourself, embrace yourself by doing it silently. Where do you find meaning in your being? You, everyone is different. Today, we're working on the discovery part of who we are. That someone can identify you. It's amazing going back to childhood that a baby knows the sound of its mother. The smell of its mother. As soon as they come out of the womb. I want you to think about that. If a baby can do that, what can you do as you've been on the earth longer than a baby has? You were once a baby. I want you to be able to come to an understanding of yourself that you have the power to discover the real you. I want you to be able to get to know yourself. Make a commitment for you to get to know who you really are. You have to dig deeper. And don't let anybody tell you who you are. How many of you have allowed others to tell you who and what you are? I have. Yeah, and what was that like for you? It was a horrible experience because it took a while to change the mindset to what I believe versus what they believed that I was. Yeah. That's like like I just experienced that. Nobody's ever called me selfish. But because the person didn't handle the thing in the right way, they passed it on to me. Instead of taking a moment to say this or that. What stories have you told yourself about you? Thinking about that. Discovering who you are. Be patient. The understanding of ourselves starts at seeing ourselves as we're very, very young. We had, had an experience in here and it was very triggering for most people. I asked the, the people that were in our group to close their, their eyes and go back to when they were a child. And I wanted them to stay in that moment to see themselves. Do you remember that, Trish? Yes, I remember that. How easy or how difficult was that for you? That was very difficult for me. We had people crying in here. Do you remember that? Yes, because I was one of them. Yeah, you were. Because sometimes when we are able to connect with that young person, we find ourselves. We, we, we now at the adult age, the purpose for that, visiting the younger of ourselves was to find out what you needed at that time and many of you were able to discover what you needed remember you were under a tree trish yes i remember yeah See, i don't forget things 
We want you to be gentle with yourself as you go about discovering yourself. I don't suggest that you do the inner child by yourself because it should be guided. But I want you to think about How you became the you that you are. What influenced you? Who was in your life to influence you? When you think about your activities in life and the things that you do, what captivates your interest? I love um, inspirational quotes. Live talk is based been with us for any length of time we've always got something inspirational on board how about a favorite book Trish, what's your favorite book or game or movie my favorite book it's a series but it's the Blueford ser series by Paul Langdon oh. and my my favorite game is catchphrase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you like that, huh? I love Scrabble. I love word games. And my favorite book is the Bible. When I was a child, my favorite book was Charlotte's Web. My favorite movie is Beaches. Because I'm a deep person and my friendships last long. If you are my friend, it's a long-lasting friendship. And that's what that movie was about. Places that are important to you. Discover them. Moments. People who are important to you. Who has had the most impact. Stories that were told to you as you were a child or younger. How they've shaped you and influenced you as you are right now. These are the questions. These are the formative times. These are the times in your life where you were just coming into your becoming who you would be. Babies are interesting to me. You know, you look at babies and little kids and with their little personalities, they are shaping into the adults that they're going to become. Please focus on your strengths more than you do your, your talents. What do you find? A real sense of purpose. And for those of you who are still, if today is your day to discover a change and you want a chance to be able to get down in a deeper level, we encourage you to seek help. We are no, we are no doctors. I am a trained life coach. And by no means a doctor, I hold a certificate to do what I do. If you need extra help, we want you to get that help. Selfhood is not being selfish. Selfhood is to focus on yourself while embracing the things about you. When you have the toolkit to be able to do that, your hands we used as the tool today, your hands can do a lot, but in place them in empowerment, discovery, knowledge, and love. We will be right back 
we have Trisha's treasures. We're going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. to turn it over to Trisha's treasures. Trish? What I want to discuss is about the specific word that we were talking about today, and that is becoming. And something, two assignments that I had in my experience in college was the question of what made you want to pick this major that I am in, which is the major of early childhood education. And I wrote, the first essay I wrote, I discussed the experience with my mom who taught us at a young age how to read or ABCs and things like that before. And it connected me to wanting to do that sort of thing in for, for kids because that experience for me was good. I needed that experience to know that my mom will be there to help me. That was a good experience. And the second paper I wrote, the essay was around the topic of what gave you the passion, what led you to your passion for what you want to do. And I talked about projects that I did in school. The projects that I did, I discussed in the essay that I didn't want to do them, but they slowly trained me into thinking that, you know what, being a teacher, I, I can do that. So the they trained me into public speaking and embracing my creativity and planning and i thought that those two assignments fit perfectly with this podcast on talking about what i want to be and what i want to become i'm not a teacher yet and that's why it says not yet becoming but I want to be a teacher and on the road to becoming that and who I want to be also in my mindset and who I am as a person has a lot to do with my will and determination and being passionate and also considerate of my feelings and emotions of how I can handle certain things. So when you want to become something, think about, try and think, think about how it will benefit you and help you grow as a person because every journey has a lesson and there is a reason for every path and every struggle and every challenge that you face while you are becoming the person that you are supposed to be or your best self. So continue to Go on your path and grow on your path on your becoming. Thank you for that. What lion power that has. Thank you so much for that. We're here for you guys if you want to hear more of uh, Five Talk 
Facing the Lion podcast. All you have to do is ask Google, Siri, or Alexa for our latest. Or you can go to our YouTube channel or come right here to Facebook where we are. We want to ask the question, Trish, you're going to be up first. What have you learned and discovered about yourself in this podcast on your becoming? I learned that I can do it if I believe I can do it. I can't think that that I'm going to fail before I even start because I won't even start. I won't even walk into the ring before the match. And I have to tell myself that before you say, oh, I'm just going to go downhill, try to go up the hill first. Try and test it out to see what you can do and weigh out my options on saying I can instead of automatically saying I can't and I won't and that's it, point blank period. (laughs) And my experience here today, it was triggering because I thought about, wow, like there is so much limits that I can reach that I haven't reached yet because of not anyone else to blame, but myself in my mindset. And that was a hard pill to swallow. But at the end of the day, I can, I still have a chance to change that and do something different. Love that. Thank you for that. How does it make you feel? What you've learned and discovered. I feel like I have a lot to work on, but that makes me also that I also feel empowered because I have a chance to work on it. I've learned with myself that what someone else may think of me is not the end of the world, and that as long as I know who I am. And I'm, I'm always willing to make changes because I'm okay with me knowing that I have to still make improvements. I have to be the best me that I can be. And because someone gets upset doesn't mean that what they're necessarily saying about you is true. They've said it because they don't want to be wrong. And instead of looking at myself and saying, oh, I'm always doing something wrong, why can't anybody see the good in me? I see the good in me. And yes, I still am a work of progress. How does that make me feel? That there's work to do. And there's always a better version of me without being perfect. I don't have to embrace perfection because I'm not perfect. Nobody is. What I will embrace is my response, my knowledge. I will embrace the me that I am because I'm becoming. I want to thank all of you for being here today. And I want especially to thank our audience uh, members. We want you, as these are recorded for your listening, chime in. Tell us how you feel. You can always text us directly or even in our podcast, our YouTube channels. You can always give forth your voice. We want to hear from you. Trish, I'd like to say thank you to you for always your hard work and for all of your creativity. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to take a screenshot of our backboard 
and we can use that for our YouTube page so that you all know that we really do have people coming in as a group. That's our proof, isn't it, Trish? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. And she mentioned the other day, I'm so glad you screenshotted that. And we do really meet as a group, so uh, you can do the same thing. Thank you guys so much for listening to our episode of Vibe Talk Facing the Lion podcast. Thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next time right back here. I dare you to face the challenge of becoming you.